But in there, actually, you can see how serious we are. How both of us are really committed and passionate about this technocratic debates because it has huge implications for our democracy and for the well-being of our people. Leloy, can you help me? Give me something more light-hearted. So, kamusta ang gadgets sa training natin? Ah, ano, light-hearted ba tayo? I thought you wanted to talk about my 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 wine piece and you also wanted to yes, talk yes. about the workshop. Let's do wine so and then food this. diplomacy. Just for a little bit short lang. Okay, let's go to your wine piece, which we were supposed to talk about the other week. <laughs> Both of ours were uh, easy. So, ang dami pang... Uh, so, can you tell me about what's happening with you? Are you having a kind of a uh, bon vivant... Existentialist, uh, are you having a Parisian uh, moment there? What's going on with you? Or this... uh, I, I actually, I'm, I'm celebrating the fact that hmm. um, there are more and more people who are importing natural wine into the Philippines and your taste profile that natural wine is promoting. Um, in my article, I said that bon, bon Vinos lang yung only importer of natural wine, but apparently in the last two years, parang dumami na rin and Bon Vinos, the, the people there, tag the other They, they really think of themselves as a, a community of importers who are bringing in a new kind of wine to the Philippines. Very interesting. And itong natural wine movement is part of a broader movement nga that I said is, is rebelling against, you know, I, I'm pretentious about it. What I call neoliberal wine uh, are the, the wine from the height of the Clinton years from the 90s, which is the period of Wolf of Wall Street, the period of excess. So everything was excessive at that time and the wines were excessive. In other words, they were 15, 16% alcohol. They were extremely fruity. They were fruit bombs. You, ah. They were so big that you could only eat them with a steak. So parang luxurious wines. So these are the, the wines of neoliberalism. Whereas itong, itong correction naman dito, well, the, 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 the uh, wine critic John Bonnet calls what, what I call neoliberal wines. Um, wine critic John Bonnet calls... Um, the era of big flavor. So yeah. itong natural wine na to is a correction to that. So itong mga wines, for example, you take a bon vino red, it's 11% alcohol. It's very easy to drink. Right. In, 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 in French parlance, it's called glue glue because you, 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 the sound that your gullet makes yeah, yeah, when you're, yeah. you're, you're just chugging yeah. it. So yeah. these are glue glue wines or glug, gluggable wines or another pretentious word might be quaffable. These are extremely right. quaffable wines. And uh, the oh, Bombay yeah, yeah. website made a very interesting argument. And they said na these wines are actually Filipino-friendly because Filipino food works well with lighter alcohol. And I said, that's ah, absolutely true. That's it's absolutely true. true because we know for a fact that the best alcohol for Filipino food is, according to Nick Joaquin, di ba? San Miguel Pale Pilsen, which is, yeah. <laughs> insofar as alcohol goes, light crisp and perfect for the beach and yeah, perfect for the yeah. summer so if our beers are light crisp and perfect for the summer right so should our wines be light crisp and perfect for the summer so it was just me like really honoring honoring the the natural wine movement in the philippines and telling them you know keep, keep doing what you what you need to do the other thing that i did in that article was i i kind of said that uh here are a, a couple of bottles that uh, may yeah. not necessarily be natural wine but are good value and that share that kind of light quaffable profile that is very enjoyable in the Philippines. Lalo na wala naman tayong winter. Eh. And what business do we have drinking like really, really expensive $500 Cabernet Sauvignons or Bordeaux blends, right? Um, that are, ver I think the term in economics is verb blend goods. Yeah, they're expensive because they're expensive. Um, yeah, and walang value walang basis in reality, yeah. Oh, walang basis in reality. <laughs> It, you drink them deep into the winter, um, deep into a Parisian winter, and you eat them with a steak. Right. Like, how many of us are, right. like, eating steaks and it's negative whatever degrees outside? It, it just, like, doesn't work. And you don't want to spend that money anyway. So I think these natural wines are, are value for money. And just, they're, oh, So they're just for the purpose of our connexus and including our capitalist friends and all oh. listening to us, This is your Esquire? This is part of your Esquire writings? Where yeah, I, 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 went, I went back to Esquire for this piece. I mean, I, I, I on and off naman ako sa Esquire, diba? because of, yeah, yeah, I have a very good relationship with yeah. some of the editors. I'm a big fan of, of your Esquire pieces. I mean, they, they really helped me a lot in terms of having an emotional appreciation of many issues, including, you know, um, like it's, I mean, it's funny, like reading your articles on Esquire made me better appreciate 
chapters in your book. You know, say so, like it, I, well, I know it's weird, but that that kind of happened to well, me. Well, I mean, ikaw rin naman, Richard, de ba? Parang there's this thing where you write for different outlets depending yeah. on yung topic mo and depending of on on what side of your personality you you kind of wanna shine through, right? Exactly. So I, I think kung kung gusto kong magshine through yung admittedly, you know, that 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 side of myself that gets called eh, elitista dahil may ligaw ang kumain at may ligaw ang minom. Burgis, so, burgis. So, so, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Oh, so what, what, what do you think, Richard? Well, what do you think of, uh, did I over-intellectualize that one? You know, no, no, no. About I'm, about I certain wines as neoliberal as, uh, right. as, as coming out of the, the age of excess. Or, you know, you want to be even more pretentious about it. You can call this end of history wines. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I think I think Fukuyama, Fukuyama is really far from you. Yeah, he's just on oh. the other side in Palo Alto. No, ako, I mean, the way I see it is that you're saying we're going from the pretentiously posh wine to kind of uh, hipster slash woke wine. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's yeah. how I see yeah. it, bro. It's oh. like, yeah. Yeah. Good transition, right? It's like yeah. legit, authentic, so millennial. Like your argument yeah. is so millennial, authentic. Yeah, not even very Gen Z, right? Very millennial. It's so very millennial. Good. It's so... Ikea, Swedish, you know, like it's like my Swedish friends would make very similar arguments, I'm sure, if they were presented with a similar situation. I, I really like it. And and for me, on my side, I'm not sure how light is, because I'm a very competitive person. Lele. You also know that, right? Ako, I'm obsessed now following what's happening with the Michelin star rest, uh, Michelin star game of uh, a competition mm-hmm. and i was just mm-hmm. reading this fantastic piece on nikkei asia because as you know tokyo of course is i think the highest michelin star per capita or whatever um but now uh, istanbul no uh, is is joining the game and uh, michelin just released last october a kind of a rating of i think what what two three dozen turkish restaurants a, a one got three star which is the high closest to the highest i think four young highest a couple got two including some traditional ones so I don't know, Lelo, a part of me is saying like this is a time for adobo diplomacy, right? Yeah, it's really this good. is because whoever I talk to, whatever anong lahi, when I say Filipino food na hindi balot or whatever, adobo is really what comes to their mind. And and adobo has this kind of a universal flexibility and appeal to it that I think has so I rather call it adobo diplomacy. I think it's this really yes. And I, I and I, and so I'm kind of becoming nationalistic and obsessed around it, but that's also also a bit philosophical around it, just like how you're philosophical around wine and everything like that. So, oh, how I wish if I had the ear of our tourism secretary, I would say, please rather spend money on getting the Michelin stars to come here because there's a strong evidence once you get your restaurants Michelin starred, kind one lang, it yeah. pops up high quality tourism. People just want to yeah. go there just to be Michelin star restaurant. Yeah. Customer, and you're talking about uh, Lelo millions of dollars in revenue oh. just mm. in a single restaurant over a I mean, quarter or so. Yeah, I mean, of course, you 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 problem mo dun, it does entail a, a, a kind of format, right? A kind of tasting menu format that is yeah. inspired by by French techniques. So, for example, um, in the U.S., the, the Michelin star system has been good, but I, I, I actually kind of trust local local reviewers better than the Michelin star. So I'm not going to go to a place here in the U.S. simply because it has a three star. Um, you know, should I say? I've had, I've had a bad... No, no, no. Don't do it. Don't do it. No, no, no. I've had a, I've had a bad experience, I've had a bad experience with, with Michelin star restaurants here. Pero, you know, uh, restaurants that have been rated well by the San Francisco Chronicle, for example... Yes. Yes, um, yes, I've yes, had a, yes. I've had a better experience with with people who reflect the appreciation of of a restaurant using a local lens and an understanding of what local cuisine is like. And there is Californian cuisine, Crowd and source. I really don't trust uh, Guy Michelin to 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 tell me what great California cuisine is. I I, I just yeah. I just don't. I I don't. I, I'm um, Michel Michelin. My, my point. Uh, Lele was, remember, the argument I was making is globalization of the Filipino food, right? So I'm talking about yeah. public PR. I'm so maharlika about this. Yeah, right? yeah that's true. I'm that's really, true. Honestly, of course, personally, I mean, mm. I've, I've, I've been in all of these cities with all of these Michelin. I'm never going to line up or spend hundreds of dollars just to be in a Michelin star. Yeah. I'm not that guy. It's not because I'm Ilocano, but maybe because it's a Ilocano, right? Um, yeah. But I think for our national brand, our industry and all, it really helps. It brings Michelin and all of them in. By the way, we yeah. have a question here from, from Eden. Yeah, sorry. Hold but but mabilis, lang, mabilis lang, Richard. Having said that, you know, we should also honor our restaurant tours 
who have made it to non-Michelin guys that are also like yung oh. world top 50 or Asia top 50 yung list na yon. So you know, we have somebody like an, a real innovator like Chef Jordi Navarra of course of of right. Toyo who has consistently been in Asia top in and out of Asia out. top 50 and, and yeah. 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 yeah yeah so see, so so see 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 Jordi Navarra of course um and then of course dito sa dito sa US si Chef Francis Ang of of Abaca who just right. made it to the New York Times 50 best restaurants in the United States so yeah, yeah yeah so yeah. so i think i think you know Michelle and Guy yes we need that but we're we're we're, we're getting a lot a lot of love also already right. and I, you know i know a lot of people not everybody will can afford a dinner to Toyo or or even you know my new favorite sa Manila ngayon yung Metis which is another uh, neighbor lang yun ang Toyo. But these, these chefs, I mean, guys, they're, they're, they're doing brilliant. amazing yeah. things with brilliant. our cuisine. And they're showing that our cuisine is, well, you know, our cuisine is great home cuisine, but it's, it can, it's also great hot cuisine. Uh, and, and it works well with a kind of elevated tasting menu. And, you know, if, if you, I mean, not everyone can do it, but if you can afford it, I think it's good to patronize the art of the chef. Or for these chefs, because if you 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 sit and eat a meal of uh, somebody like Chef Jordi, I mean it's art, it's art, and you know not everyone can patronize art the same way. But if you can, I think these are people who deserve your love and who deserve your pesos. I, I love it. Let uh, it actually. I'm I'm gonna kind of try to cheat around this and make this essentially episode five. So we have a new episode actually. Oh. Episode five is gastro. Gastro philosophy, right? We have a question, by the way, uh, Lela, I, not question, but comment by some of our connexus in the US. Eden is saying she loves Napa Valley uh, reds like Newton and Pedestal. Have you tried them? What do you have to say about it? Uh, well, I'm you, not a, I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm a kind of a non alcoholic guy, so please. So, uh, so you, 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 and Napa Valley Reds are, are I, I'm probably, well, I just talked about spending a lot on food, but I, I feel like I'm personally <laughs> priced out of, I'm personally yeah. priced out of Napa at this point because, mm. ng mahal, mahal na ng Napa, uh, right. and, you know, there's, right. there's this one, there's this one story from Napa Valley where a winery, like, um, sold one of its bottles for just $100 walang bumili when they upped it to $300 to mass yung sales i think that's what you that's what you mean when you say verb yeah. because the tourism the the wine tourism in california is so centered around napa so in many ways like you know as someone i, I don't personally i rarely spend above 30 35 dollars on a bottle of wine so hindi naman ako ganun kaelitista right yeah. so i'm i'm practically priced out of napa where i drink is actually um you know, 10 minute walk. The wineries I go to are 10 minute walk away from my house. It, these, the, these are the natural wine wineries of Berkeley. I really so, want to visit you soon then, bro. I mean, I really want yeah. to. I so mean, my favorite, my favorite winery is actually our neighbor. It's called Dunkin' and Goat. And uh, they have a great profile on the New York Times. I love uh, the know, they're, <laughs> Yeah, they're, 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 an, they're an amazing winery. So I, I really can't comment on Napa because I, you know, I, 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 I price myself out of Napa. Right. Sa Moven Peak, sabi ni Eden, meron sila niyan. I think the, oh. the, the winery you were talking about or something like that. Uh, uh, just to end, uh, because this is almost a different episode, Lelo, you know, and and I'm, oh. and <laughs> it actually gets me emotional. Again, uh, going back to Michelon and all, for me, again, it was about branding. Ako, ako Lelo, how, how do I put it? I'm kind of trying to get more into the lifestyle writing because I feel we have to use our platforms and voice Uh aside from the fact that toxic machado politics, even economics now, um, because I think we have to use our voice and platforms to help our very talented chefs and people to do, mm. to amplify the talking. Because we have brilliant chefs who are also great talkers and all, but they don't necessarily have the time to write, right? Or use the platforms that we have. So I feel you and I, people like us, who are a little bit peripatetic all over the place, above. We have an we have an obligation to amplify that voice, no? Amplify that voice, and God bless his soul. Uh, you know, uh, Anthony Bourdain was one of the big guys who kind of put yes. things in the discussion. So I think we owe him also to continue this. This. So can you make a more more shout out about this? I I actually like your discussion about the mga non Michelin, especially the ones. Yeah, in yeah. So well, so I call like see see si chef, si chef Francis Ang, for example. Alam mo yung 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 interpretation niya of Filipino food. I I bring guests from the Philippines. I actually brought si si Ma'am Teresita Angsi who was visiting the Bay Area. I brought her there. Galing right. Pilipinas din ako doon. Sabi ko, wala akong pakialam we're feeding you Filipino food because it's so different from the food in 
in the Philippines. Right. And you know what? Chef, Chef Francis Ang has been, has been dabbling in Tausog cuisine. He's been dabbling in Tausog cuisine in his restaurant in, 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 in San Francisco. And I mean, that's not something a Manila chef would do, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's but they have, they have like that. amazing in the south. Oh. I mean, mm. I didn't try the Tausog, but the Maranao food, oh my god, it's mm. so good. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm sorry, bro. Like, I, I love Malaysian food, and oh. when it was in Mindanao, Muslim Mindanao, areas, I really love the food. You're absolutely right. The the ones abroad, Filipinos have a much more diversified, inclusive sense of Filipino cuisine than maybe some of them in the Philippines. But I hope that will change. Because oh. we have to say it. If the world-class ones in the U.S. are doing that, the world-class ones in Manila should also do that. Mm. I should, I, remember, I said both are world-class. I didn't. Yeah, both yeah, are yeah. world-class, but they're different versions of world-class. No, can you please yeah, go? Yeah. I love. See, Chef, see Chef Francis. You know, I looked up his biography. He's actually he's from Manila, and yeah. so he so he and his Tagalog is native. So he's kind of Filipino, but he's also Manileño. So he he kind uh, of travels the world. Exactly. And I looked at his Instagram. You, you should look at his Instagram. He loves promoting Manila restaurants also. So he's this, wait, wait, he promotes wait, Filipino wait, restaurants wait, in the US and yeah. also promotes oh. restaurants in the Philippines. And you know, he was on he was on the Ryan Seacrest show just uh just just two weeks ago actually. And so right. he's become a kind of really great nice. ambassador for Philippine cuisine here in the US. And his food is is just brilliant. I mean, I, I adore his food. May may, he, may his uh, tribe uh, you know multiply. Uh, in the Manila, what were the great uh, up and coming or already arrived uh, restaurants? Well, for me, nga, yung established yung matagal na sa Asia's, Asia's fifty is um is Toyo. Um, and then there's the there there's Toyo or Toyo. Like, Toyo, Toyo, as in uh, K, 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 Jordi Navarro, K, yeah. K Jordi Navarro, and then uh, a new similar one which is just in the same area, sa Caravan Complex, yung 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 metis which is um they had an amazing dish na parang uh, barrio fiesta daw nasara na nasara na oh. And, uh, so 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 ito di, 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 ito yung mga ito yung mga high, ito yung mga high end of course pero you know Mas like ka. pero of course of course you know as a, as an OFW as somebody who is living in the states many times gusto ko lang talaga mag Jerry script ay, gusto ko lang talaga mag-jolibee. Alam mo, Jollibee eh. <laughs> yung j- j- Jollibee. Oh, yung Jollibee is also, yung Jollibee is also, is also picking up, di ba? It yeah. got named Best Fried Chicken in the US by yes. Eater Magazine. And Eater, speaking of, speaking of parang, uh, speaking of parang publications that I rely on over the game. Please, Michelin, go ahead. I, 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 I love, I love Eater. And so for Eater to say that Jollibee is the best fried chicken, it, it's, it's a real honor for, for our, for I saw our, that. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. in the Philippines, what are the uh, human non Michelin uh, the like crowdsourcing uh, reviews that you trust and you appreciate when you go around Manila? If someone is watching us who wants to go back to Manila looking for some good food, not hindi pretentious but great food, san sila dapat titingin sa review? You, you just opened up a huge hole in my heart, Richard, because that used to be e. Clinton, of course. Well, yeah. initially that used to be Doreen Fernandez. And then uh, when Doreen passed, it was Clinton Palanca. And then Clinton passed. And is there uh, anyone uh, coming in their tradition? For you know, the- you know, I, I, I trust the the palette of she doesn't write as much anymore. I, I, but I really trust the palette of Michelle Ayuyao. Um, mm-hmm. in the same way I trusted the palette of Clinton. But I honestly, I still feel the 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 huge hole that Clinton yeah. has left. In the same way of- Carlos Seldran is a huge hole in terms of yeah. Manila yeah. culture and all. I mean, we uh, that's what I'm saying, Lela. We owe it to these people to do our little part. Of course, in no way can we match the legacy of these people. But kaya nga, I'm, we're doing this effectively fifth episode. <laughs> uh, because I just felt we have to talk more about these things. And these things mm-hmm. are about life. It's about our culture, about our country. Because, you know, I go abroad. Uh, I'm not talking about Europe abroad, US abroad. Just our neighbors, no? And the kind of passion that foreigners have about their food, that the locals have, like Balinese food, like I was just going there, like, and I was saying, like, how we wish you have more of that in the Philippines. But siguro, I'm just being ignoramos. I don't know as much as you. Kaya nga, I'm, tanong ako ng tanong sa'yo because you seem to be much more Borgis than me. I used to do this with Clinton, diba? I would. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would, yeah. You had, ako, I had the Carlos Seldra. I would, I would have uh, dinner, I would have dinner with Clinton uh, and I would uh, tell him, thing, you know, Means and the dinner came in. It was actually a restaurant that he was reviewing. So, maraming kailangan ka um, I, I, I would just ask him questions about. I would just yeah, ask him yeah. questions about food, about about the history of food in the Philippines, and 
it was like really learning from the master and um i mean clinton is no longer with us of course but his writings are with us and right. I, i i really feel that people should pick up his book yung the gullet which which is a uh, great account of what happened to the Manila food scene in the last 20 or so years, wow. right? He was documenting that. And speaking, of course, of, you, you know, yung restaurant, yung Toyo, yung si restaurant ni Jordi Navarro, Clinton was, of course, one of the great advocates of that restaurant. And, and that restaurant, I don't think, would have had yung kind of early critical reception that it it had, if not for the great Clinton, Clinton Palanca, who was not just one of our great, food writers but just one of the greatest stylists of the of yeah. the last 20 years period in any genre right he's, and, he's and on a per sentence level nobody could write a sentence like clinton did yeah so he has kind of a whole his own oeuvre right his own yeah, yeah. Into yeah. Oeuvre, yeah thank you so much lelo i know you have a lot ahead of you god bless you i really enjoyed this episode uh it it's it went more than lighthearted it went more like deep hearted no um especially oh. when we talk about our good friends who are no longer with us clinton carlos seldran another person yeah, carlos really changed i mean like carlos, carlos and and nick Joaquin and i mean like these are people who completely made me 10 times more filipino than i was before like my love for the yeah. country is incomparable to what it was before i came across their works or these people like when i talk about manila Like I almost have tears yeah. in my eyes, right? Like it's very yeah. different because you see the yes. poetry of it in ways you never saw. And I'm yeah. even from Baguio, right? I mean, like it's, uh -huh. it's incredible, right? So thank you so much, Lelo. I hope we can do more of this yeah. kind of discussions in person also in the near future. Inshallah, God willing. I really appreciate it. And then at the same time, my my congratulations. So I'm betraying the time to our my good friends in Netherlands. <laughs> I'm going to text some of them soon. They just pulled off the victory against the United States. Very convincing victory. Three wow. one. It's by the way, it's called football, not soccer. So <laughs> yeah, oh, Richard, next, next episode, you have to convince me that I should <laughs> give it a football. chance. Despite my ADD and despite the fact that I'm a Filipino living in the United yes, States. Yes, yes. Oh. Hey, and a huge yes. LeBron James and a huge LeBron James fan. I know. I I love Kobe Bryant and uh, my, my and LeBron James. I mean, my point is, US is going to host World Cup soon. In the, the next World Cup is going to oh. be hosted by US. So na ako. Biden is super on next level. Biden was on it on Twitter. I was like laughing at it, and I had to tell the Biden, "Hey, this is because actually the other day I just randomly mm -hmm. tagged." Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter, about Elon. Like randomly, <laughs> so randomly messaging people. Who knows? Maybe big lang sumagot si Uncle Joe, de ba? Uh, Maybe trollish na ako, but it works. Eh. Um, so yes, and it's good for attention span. Believe me, like chess and and playing games, you mga super role playing games, mm -hmm. and like it really helped me with my attention span because I'm a little bit also sabog all over the place. Oh. You can see, like, I want to do 10 things at the same time. So I'm telling you, it's good for attention span. It's good oh. for patience. And I, you have no idea how many games I watch now. One zero, 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 extra time penalty. Like, pero andun pa rin ako eh. I mean, like, I'm almost having a heart attack, but I'm still watching it. And of course, my heart is full 100% for Brazil now. But as an Asian... I'm not ruling out the Japan miracle. I mean, the Japanese are just amazing. You know, they are going against guys who are four or five inches taller, taller than them and they're beating Germany team A, Spain team A. I'm not downplaying what Korea did, but they're beating the first teams of these countries. And so, Lelo, please watch because an Asian team might pull off a miracle also this, this, uh, this okay. uh, World Cup, football World Cup. So maybe All next right. episode, Nathan, before Christmas, let's have one soon. Uh, Uh, Lelo, I really appreciate I, I I think this is my favorite episode so far. We are today. It's a great way to start the day, bro. And a great hopefully a great way to end your day. Uh no, actually, I'm gonna watch the next match. Argentina. Ah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I love Argentina. Okay, bro, see you. Okay, bro, see you. Okay, bro, yeah, thank you very much. God bless you. And our, our, our Kametas and our Connexus are really loving it. The responses I'm seeing, they're, they love it. I think this is their, their favorite. No offense to our previous okay. episodes, but this was more heartfelt. Maybe we should do more of this, this kind of okay. episodes. So just to say to mga Connexus, Kameta, I'm going to break this down to two episodes because essentially we have okay. different discussions in depth. Okay. God bless and have a good time with your mom. Send regards okay. to everyone and talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Okay,